Okay, so um, doing a little vlog video here because we've had a lot of people ask um, and send me messages and reply to uh, several of my um, Facebook marketplace ads and um, the meta business ads that I've made. Um, so I've had a lot of people reach out and ask what a tune, tune uh, entails and what is it good for, when do you want to do it, um, you know, and especially if you're thinking about installing um, actual hard parts, you know, what's the, the kind of the order of doing um, doing that whole deal. So um, as it's related to the Gen 3, 4, and 5 LS and LT platforms, it's kind of the same across any platform, anything that you're, you're using or dealing with, um, but that's specifically what we, what we deal with. Um, so from the standpoint of having a stock vehicle, um, whether it's a, a 5.3 or 4.8 truck or, you know, like an F-body car or a Gen 4 Camaro or a VET or, you know, a CTSV or, you know, anything like that, there is room uh, on the table um, that's, you know, there's, there's some left on the table from the factory. Um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you because I, I I go through enough files, but I'll pull up a I'll pull up a, a file and kind of just go through some of the things that can be done because I've had people message me and say hey you know I'm thinking about doing a cam swap or an exhaust swap this that and the other and what does it mean to actually get something tuned? So the only way to really make horsepower and torque is through hard parts. Okay. Um, so if you want to make big power numbers or, you know, put something together that, you know, is really impressive and makes a lot of horsepower, um, that's going to come down to hard parts. However, there is a good bit um, in the stock tune file that can be changed just as, as a bone stock vehicle. Um, so the first thing, in my opinion, um, the biggest thing to um, do is to do the transmission tuning. I think that that will... Um, be the biggest difference um, you know so uh, and what does that entail um, so the first thing is going to be to um, limit not get rid of but limit the amount of torque management that's pulled out so anytime that the vehicle sh uh, shifts uh, the torque management that's there is going to pull timing advance out of the shifts in an effort to um, you know uh, make the shifts smooth and um, to make, you know, pro life, pro prolong the life of the transmission. Um, you know, but like all of the hard parts, a transmission, you know, a 4L60 or a 4L80 does have a shelf life, you know, and so after so long, it does need to be serviced. Um, and so, but in the scanner, we can see when we do a data log, we can see how much timing is being pulled. And so that usually the, the, the stock transmissions are designed in such a way to where they, um, you know, that way you don't spill your coffee, you know, the shifts aren't real hard, they don't jerk you around. The only problem is that it slips the clutch a lot, slips the clutches a lot, and it, um, uh, you know, creates a lot of heat and it burns up the clutches, and it's not, you know, from a performance standpoint, it's not really the, um, not really what you want. So we can go in and we can take a little bit of the torque management out to limit the amount of spark, of spark advances being pulled. We can also go into uh, like the shift pressures and we can adjust the shift, the upshift pressures um, to uh, make them a little bit more um, firmer. Uh, so put more line pressure in them and that firms up the shifts a little bit. And then we also can go into the shift uh, timing and we can shorten the amount of time that it takes for the shift to happen. So like in milliseconds. Um, and so, you know, when you hear it shift, um, and it sounds like it's taking, it's taking what seems like a long time for the vehicle to shift. Um, that is related to that. Um, the shift scheduling is something that you can get into trouble with as a tuner because when you start to raise the mile an hour that the shift happens, um, sometimes that can freak people out because a three or four mile an hour difference shifting from first to second gear at 20 miles an hour as opposed to 24, 25 miles an hour, 
While it doesn't sound like a lot, that could easily be the difference in four or 500 RPM, which when you're driving, you know, the first time you experience that, that could really kind of mess you up and make you think something's wrong. Um, so typically, unless, and most people don't know, but you know, uh, typically when customers ask about transmission tuning, um, unless they initiate that conversation about the scheduling, about the, the actually changing the mile an hour of where the transmission shifts, I leave it alone. Um, when the torque converter locks is uh, another thing that, um, and there's certain gears where you, you know, you just get rid of the torque converter locking whatsoever. The torque converter locking is great for uh, fuel mileage, but not so much for making horsepower. Um, so we set the mile an hour at which the transmission, uh, the torque converter can lock to a, an unrealistic amount to where it's never going to reach it. Um, downshifts, we don't typically touch that stuff. So. Transmission tuning is the biggest one. Um, some of the other areas, um, if you have a Gen 4 or 5 motor, um, the number one thing is to delete uh, the uh, DOD, uh, the displacement on demand. Um, it, it's, you don't get any better gas mileage from doing that and it's uh, responsible for um, you know, uh, destroying lifters and camshafts and in some, some cases, um, you know, entire engines if, if gone left untouched. Um, another thing, um, we go to is a lot of the Gen 4 and 5 stuff we like to run in mass airflow only so we're not letting it blend with the virtual volumetric efficiency table. Um, the mass airflow sensor alone um, is the is especially for a street driven vehicle um, is the best way to run it primarily uh, just because um, the mass airflow sensor actually takes an air reading coming through the hot wire in the sensor and knows what to do with it versus when it's referencing a VE table or a VVE table, um, those are based on a calculation between the manif manifold absolute pressure sensor and a few other things. And so um, just by, uh, and again, if it's if the vehicle's not modified or heavily modified, you, you may not even feel the difference, but when it comes to tuning um, and time, uh, for, and time and money, when those are involved, uh, doing it in mass airflow only is, um, the way to go and we can calculate and log some of the VVE stuff in the background and adjust it if need be but 99% of the time um, you know uh, just running the Gen 4 and 5 and Gen 3 off the mass airflow sensor only is perfectly fine. Um, and the other big thing is uh, changing some of the fuel um, fuel things so the stoichio, the stoichiometric uh, table you know, is usually for 14.67 or 14.8, which which is pure gasoline, which we don't have uh, in the United in the United States, um, and so that has to be changed to 14.108 or 14.2. Um, and if it's not a flex fuel vehicle, you know, we can we can burn we can burn you know lambda one or you know in our in, in AFR reading 14.2 uh, the whole time. Um, we like to also disable the long-term fuel trims, um, just because getting it to getting the vehicles to run off the short-term fuel trims only typically is there's no issue with that. Um, so that's what we like to typically do there. Uh, power enrichment is a big one, um, making sure that that the delay isn't set too high, the ramp in and out rate is uh, high enough. Um, the power enrichment, which is your uh, power enrichment or PE, is your wide open throttle um, fueling basically. It's set really, really, really rich from the factory. And so leaning that out will typically pick up some power um, along with the enable, uh, the pedal enable through the throttle uh, pedal. Um, changing that some can really help as well and make the vehicle run a lot better. Um, the sooner you can get it into power enrichment, uh, the better. Um, you know, and then also uh, in the sp in the spark areas, there's some modifiers that you want to change. Uh, where the spark tables, uh, the mo the modifier tables will try to pull timing um, based on certain intake air temperature and certain engine coolant temperature. Um, and a lot of the times, a lot of these these fi these base files uh, right out of the vehicles is that's happening in areas where you know it's totally safe. So at 212 degrees of engine coolant temperature, you don't want to be pulling three or four degrees of timing. Uh, that's a perfectly safe temperature. Um, same thing with the intake air temperature um, stuff. So like uh, on this 2008 Silverado file, you know at 86 degrees, you know, intake air temp, it's pulling, you know, uh, two and four degrees of timing. Well, you don't want that because it's perfectly safe, you know, and if you're sitting idling in traffic, you're going to be well past that and the thing's just going to be a dog driving around town. Um, so uh, when it comes to tuning a stock vehicle, 
um, there are a, lo a lot of adjustments, in my opinion, that can be made, um, you know, not necessarily zeroing or maxing things out, but there are some things that can be done, especially in the transmission area and then some of the other limiters and multiple and uh, modifiers and things that just don't need to be there. Um, you know, so turning off the, turning off the long-term fuel trims, changing the power enrichment, that's a big one. Um, you know, and so uh, the next step from that would be what hard parts do we install? Um, you know, so um, also too, if you change wheels and tires or anything like that, you know, that'd be the time to um, to go in and, and do that as well. So we've had a lot of people asking questions about that. You know, if I have a stock truck or a stock vehicle, you know, what what good does it do me? And that's that's what it does. The next step would be discussing what what hard parts uh, are kind of on the table to be uh, installed. Um, and that's that. So uh, we've been quite busy doing tune files and uh, uh, interacting with customers and, and looking at data logs and stuff. So we've been busy there. Um, make sure you check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, we uh, can do remote tuning. Uh, if you have HP tuners um, and an MPVI uh, piece, we can do remote tuning that way. Um, also, if you're working on a swap vehicle and you have the computer out of it, uh, we can also you can also mail it to us and we can uh, put a base file in it and get it mailed back to you in the same day if you've done a cam swap or something and the vehicle does not run because we're finding out there's a lot of people out there that do these um, cam swaps and you know head swaps and things like that and then the vehicle won't run it's not going to run um, you're going to have to you're going to have to update it's a totally different video to talk about but you're going to have to update all the base running airflow tables spark tables I mean all of it. it's all going to have to be changed the knock sensors you know uh, to a lesser degree. On the misfire counters all of it okay so uh if you need anything reach out to us and check us out on social media and yeah that's that